Okay, so you've had a taste of how to create a predictive model here in Azure Machine Learning Studio. Before we go too much further and learn about all the different options for regression and classification-based prediction, I want to teach you one other very useful tool. So back when we did this in Excel from scratch, you went through building linear regression model after model. And because Excel was limited to only 16 variables, you'd have to plug in 16 variables, remove a few with really high p-values, add new variables. Uh, you may have noticed that when we trained our model, let me show you here and visualize this. What we didn't do was examine uh, any p-values. So here, we get feature meaning variable in the case of our uh, categorical variables like commute distance, occupation. Uh, it creates those dummy codes for us. And then these weights, if you remember, I liken these, not liken, these are the regression coefficient scores that we produced in Excel. But what we don't have is a p-value for each of these, telling us whether or not each of these was significant. So I remember some of my students complaining, uh, well, you know, Kent, one of these tools run all of these different models for us and tell us of all these variables which ones are significant and which ones aren't and, and handle that process for us. Well, yes, we can. So that's what we're going to do next here. Let's go ahead and delete a few things. We'll bring them back in later on. I'm going to get rid of a few of these, even our regression model and our split data. You know, honestly, we, we don't even really need our normalized data anymore either. Let's just start with our bike buyers data. So, uh, what we want next is called a feature selection. And you'll find this I th oh, right here, feature selection. All right, these are techniques for helping us choose uh, what type of, uh, by feature, they mean uh, fields or columns. So what are the fields that are going to be important for this pr particular um, prediction? Let's start with a filter-based feature selection. All right, so here's how this works. The filter-based feature selection module provides multiple feature selection algorithms. So notice these right here. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and connect this first. So these are different algorithms for determining how related each one of our features, they call it, or, or columns or variables, are to the dependent variable. So we're going to have to uh, start by selecting our target column. There we go, which is our dependent variable. So purchase bike numeric. Perfect. Okay, oops. We can uh, tell it right here how many features we're looking for. I've set that to three, but now you might be asking yourself, all right, now I don't know how many features I'm looking for. Uh, I want this tool to tell me how many that we want. Not a problem. For now, just let's put in a number. Um, we'll start with three, and I'll show you how we can, uh, we can still let it sort of tell us that. Let's go ahead and run this now. Um, We'll leave it on Pearson correlation. You might be, you might also want to know which one of these should I be using. Well, some of them depend on what type of dependent variable and independent variables we're using. If you remember, Pearson correlation is something we can only do between uh, two numeric variables. In this case, our dependent variables numeric, so that's fine. But no one of these methods is going to be best in every scenario. Um, I'm going to leave the details of each out of this video, but it's pretty easy to find these differences online. Um, what you're going to want to do is just try different ones. So for now, let's go ahead and run this. And I'll show you what options you get and how to interpret it. I'll pause it here. Okay, so we have two things we can view. Start by right-clicking this dot here on the left and go to Visualize. This one's simply going to show you, all right, if we stick with three variables, here's the ones we'd su we suggest. Cars, children, and age are going to have the biggest effect on uh, uh, biggest predictive capability. Um, leave out all the rest. Right click over here on this one and go to visualize and it tells you what those Pearson correlation coefficients are. In fact, it tells it to you for all 12. These it's rounded down to zero because it uh, figures are basically nothing. So I look at this and I say, okay, well, based on Pearson correlation, it looks like I should actually take the first four and those would do something for me uh, in this order. So I could come back here and say filter or click on this again. I don't need that quick help. And from here on out, give me those first four. Well, let's try something else. Let's do this mutual information one here. Um, this time it's going to give us an error. It's going to say, all right, value required. Oh, no, I just have to redo this. Still using purchase bike numeric. 
All right, let's go ahead and run that. We'll leave it as one desired feature. Pause. Okay, now let's go ahead and, well, once again, let's first view. Oops, didn't mean to do that. No, no, no. Right click on this one and see which one it chose as the top feature. Is it the same? No, before it was cars based on Pearson correlation coefficient. Now it chooses age as our best one. And then we right click here on this side and take a look at the numbers. And what I want to do is look and see where, actually, can I click on this? What would be really useful? Uh, nope, it won't let me do that. I want to view by the row and see a chart of, of these values. Basically, there's a point at where this score gets small enough or smaller uh, to where we should want to start cutting things off. So here, our numbers are really small. We're going to leave those out, leave those out, leave this one out. It jumps from 0.08 to 0.12. That's a much bigger jump from here to here than from income to region. Region, go, region goes up 0 0.002, and this one goes up uh, 0.004, and then this one goes up point, I, I think, I think education, the top four, no, one, two, three, four, five is what we want based on that uh, prediction. Let's try another one. Let's click on this again and use uh, chi Chi squared is one that I've used often in other contexts that is good across a variety of contexts, and I like that one. So let's pick our dependent variable again. Let's try chi squared. Uh, run. Come on. There we go. Pause. Okay, let's see what it thinks is the best one here. Oops. Okay, let's see uh, what it thinks here about this one. Okay, so with the chi-squared score, this is good. It looks like, again, I'm looking at where there's a major decrease in uh, the difference between scores. So big score, yeah, it goes down a lot, but I'm looking at where the scores start to level off. And really, with based on chi-squared, I would keep... I don't know, I think I'd keep all of them all the way through occupation. So anyway, this is just a technique for helping us to decide um, which ones we should include in our model. So from here, let's say I'm going to get rid of, based on chi-squared, I'm going to keep the top 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. So once, basically, I've gone through all these and I've decided exactly how many I want keep the nine top features. Now I can continue on with everything else. I can pull in my, all right, now let's split the data. All right, from features to here. All right, now from the split data, we'll pull in our um, train model. All right, score model. Even evaluate model. I guess I didn't really have to have that. No, I, I do want that one. And then let's pull back in our linear regression. Here we go. Let's connect the dots. Okay. Um, this is my, oh yeah, purchase. By numeric, there we go. All right, I think, have I forgotten anything? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and run this now. Run everything. And, uh, oh, uh, I forgot to set my split data. And I'm going to wait for it to finish. That's fine. So what I want to do is see now after reducing some of those features, does my R squared drop quite a bit? Hopefully, the idea is it's going to pick the features that matter the least. And so my R square, although it will go down, it should not go down a, a huge amount. Um, if you remember, I think we ended up last when we used all of those features or all those columns, fields, whatever you want to call them. I think we were around an R squared around 10.25% or something like that. So as soon as this finishes here, we'll evaluate the model and see how close we are.
evaluation results, visualize. Um, R squared dropped quite a bit. So what I would do is I would look at that and say, all right, you know what, it can't be that bad. I don't like this chi-squared technique of uh, deciding which feature should be included. So let's go back and try something different. Um, let's run just that one. Oh, I've got to select my columns. Let's try the Spearman correlation. Uh, you know, actually, now that I think about it, I doubt Spearman's going to be much use. Well, any better. It's a non-parametric test. Let's use this count-based one right here. Uh, minimum number of, uh, let's see here. Let's go with one and go ahead and run just that one. No, uh, I don't know. I know I'm just, I'm just shooting in the dark here. Let's see what we get by Fisher. Select our dependent variable. Check. Uh, let's go ahead and run just that one. Run selected. Let's see what this one says. Oh, got to wait for it to run. Visualize. So this one really likes just these first four cars, children, age, income, a lot like the uh, a lot like the Pearson correlation did. All right. Well, let's go. Uh, that's fine. Let's go with the first four then, and see how, if that one's much worse than those six. So let's go ahead and run everything. See what we get. All right. Let's see here. Based on that one, using the first four. What do we get here? R squared goes down even further to 0.48. So let me show you now, if we take this out entirely or just tell it to use all variables, how many variables total do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Let's just go ahead and tell it to use all 11 and run this thing and uh, show you what we get if we, uh, don't filter based on anything just for comparison. All right, let's see here. Evaluation results. Visualize. Oh, so, you know, based on the data I've got here, my top one was only, a, I should check this one in the first place, was only at 6.7%. So really that Pearson model, uh, I'm not sure why, I, I before I was getting 10.2, so I must have done something different with this data here, I guess. But anyway, uh, that original Pearson one actually looked like it was the best one because by using the top five, was it, or something like that, or maybe it was six or seven, or I don't know, we only went down a very slight amount in R squared. So I'm going to give you a word of warning, though, before we're done, now that we've played around with these. Um, when it comes to reducing dimensions, each of these measures, the one thing that they lack is the ability to account for um, the variance in all other independent variables. For example, when I did that Pearson correlation, all it did was give me the, the correlation between each independent variable and the dependent variable. Some of those correlations are small only because they're not accounting for variance explained by other independent variables. So uh, you really need to test each of these, test different numbers of columns and see. Uh, the, the real test is, am I getting, am I losing a lot of value in R squared? And if I am, then I'm not necessarily going to trust uh, what these each of these methods come up with. But if I can use one of these, like the, the Pearson, and I think uh, I got to remember now what we did it was something like five, and I can evaluate that, and I get an R squared that's only slightly below what I had before, then I've done a great thing. I've made some progress. I've simplified my model in a good way that doesn't lose explanatory power. Come on, run. Oh, maybe I should actually select my dependent variable one more time. Purchase bike numeric. Let's give this one last shot. So I think it was five variables we did with Pearson. All right, let's see what we get now. Evaluation results, visualize. Not bad. So we went from 0.64 or 0.62, something like that, down to 0.068. So basically, we're able to get, I don't know, 90-ish percent of the full R-squared value by using only 
where is it? Five out of the 11 variables. So uh, it is a useful tool for reducing total number of fields that we're covering.